and then and then okay what what about this next chapter so now you have this national firm um where you know hyper successful exponential growth curve uh and now you're you're headhunted to become the chief city planner for the city of toronto like can you talk about a little bit about that and and what is it like coming into the shoes of the chief city planner like what are those first few days like well, the first thing I'll say is that when the headhunter first called me, I literally laughed out loud. I and I literally said, "That is a terrible job. Who would want that terrible, <laughs> terrible job?" <laughs> like I'm not kidding you. I laughed, and I remember vividly actually leaving my office, which was at uh, Young and Bloor at that time, and I was on my bike, and I remember biking home and kind of giggling out loud and going who is the loser who would take that terrible job? <laughs> um, and then, you know, they kept calling me back and the conversations progressed. And at one point I said, look, I, I would be a terrible person for that job because these are all the things I think need to be done differently. And the headhunter said, well, can you put some of that in writing? And I thought, well, what the hell? So I wrote, I wrote basically two pages of changes I felt needed to be made. And um, the amazing thing is, is that yeah. to pretty phenomenal people at the city, Peter Milchin, who was uh, a city councillor who was charged with hiring the chief planner, and John Livy, the deputy city manager, um, they liked what I wrote. And they, the entire five years that I was there, they were phenomenally supportive of the very, you know, outward facing approach that I, that I took to the role. And I couldn't have done it with either, with either one of them. The first couple of days, I'm not kidding, I came from a, a really open concept office, our offices at Dialogue. We had like beanbag chairs and all our walls were in whiteboard paint. And I showed up into a very traditional office where I like closed the door and I was like, where are my people? Like, where are my staff? And I sat at the desk and I had no manual. The very first thing that I got was a... Um, uh, a document from the city manager that had all of my delegated authorities. So all of the things that I was delegated that I could do on behalf of city council, decisions that I could make. And this was like a 10 page document. And I went through it very carefully. And it was, that was a really cool moment because people always said, oh, the chief planner doesn't have any power. And then you get a document like that and you go, whoa, there's a lot of stuff I can do here. Okay. And there's a lot of stuff. You know, there's a lot of stuff that my predecessors didn't do that they could have done based on this document. And so I read it very, very carefully. And then, you know, I did what any smart planner would do. I created a five year strategic plan. I had committed to be there for five years. So I, I then spent the next two months creating a five year strategic plan. And um, I really used that five year strategic plan as my guidebook for how I went through the job over that five year period. Mm -hmm.